The 2023 season is less than three weeks away, and we've got some burning questions the San Francisco Giants are going to have to answer if they want to get back to the playoffs this year. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked On Giants your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And where we get started, we've got some burning questions for the San Francisco Giants ahead of the 2023 season, which is like 20 days away. And so, you know, USA gets underway in the World Baseball Classic tomorrow on Saturday. And then that's going to take up a couple weeks, and then we'll be a week away from the season when that's over. So uh, these are the questions, though, that that I've got on my mind as we start thinking about the season getting going. The number one question for me is production on the corners. And what, what I mean by that, first and foremost, is can Michael Conforto and Mitch Hanniger, one of them at least, get back to playing at an all-star level? Both of these players are not coming off like all-star type seasons for kind of different reasons, but mostly the same reason and that they had injuries. But I think the Giants are going to need one of these two to have like an all-star caliber season in order for the Giants to have a good year. And uh, I could see if one of them has a really strong year and the other doesn't, that that they could be kind of in the race. And then if both of them have that all-star caliber season, then that might be what helps propel this team to having a very good result talking, you know, 90 plus wins potentially. But, you know, so I don't see why it shouldn't be possible, especially, I mean, Michael Conforto, he's having a good spring. He's trending positively when it comes to health. And that's kind of most important in that his shoulder is doing better. He played a game in the field yesterday for the first time since 2021. His arm strength is so, has been the The progress has been so good that he's going to play right field. They believe he can play right in the season, which, you know, is more demanding on the arm. You know, longer throws to third base there basically is what happens. But let me just say, from 2017 to 2020, four seasons, obviously 2020 was not a normal full season, but still we're looking at kind of rate statistics here. So Conforto, during that four-season stretch, was over 30 percentage points above league average offensively, had a, a 265 average, 369 on base, 495 slugging, and uh, produced 14.9 Fangraphs wins above replacement, which came out to an average of 4.6 Fangraphs wins above replacement per 600 plate appearances during that stretch. And, you know, in these years, he was 24, 25, 26, and 27. And he's still young. I mean, he just turned 30. So you're not really at an age where you're expecting any kind of decline. And 4.6 Fangraphs wins above replacement. Let me just say, last year, Carlos Correa, in about 600 plate appearances, put up 4.4. And so it's not a total stretch to, to say that it's within the realm of possibility that Conforto could have a year similar in overall value to a Carlos Correa. That's that's baseball. You know, some guys have good years. Some guys have... I'm. It's totally possible. And, you know, Correa's projections are certainly better, but I'm just saying Conforto has the potential to be an all-star player. And if he had reached free agency after those four years, he was going to get a contract... Uh, north of $100 million. And then 2021 was kind of a down year and then the injury. And so that's why the Giants were able to get him on this short-term deal, but trending in the right direction. And then for Mitch Hanniger, uh, you know, he's had a season in which he put up 4.8 fan graphs wins above replacement. He's had a couple kind of, he's always been above average with the bat pretty much. And so high probability to just be like solidly above average offensively. And, uh, 
these two guys like staying on the field and producing is just going to be totally key for me. Mitch Haniger hit 39 home runs in 2021. So yeah, if they can both be good, then that would bode really well for the Giants. But I think they need at least one of them to do so. And then the other corner spots are in the infield. And, and it's a different story there. It's far less proven players in uh, David VR being the guy who's going to get that opportunity initially. So we've heard uh, at third and for VR, you know, we all know he tore it up in double A and triple A over the last couple years and then came up to the majors, got his opportunity in 2022 and had a good first day, then struggled, got sent down, came back in September and had a big September that kind of went under the radar because the team was mostly out of contention by that point. But, you know, can David VR establish himself as a good major league player? That's going to be a huge key. And then can Lamont Wade Jr. rebound to be more of the player he was in 2021 than the player he was in 2022 when he was dealing with a knee issue that looks to be doing better? We've been talking about this a lot. His uh, stance looks different and that he's able to sit in his legs, which he has said is a key. And then he's making like sprinting, diving plays on a televised game a couple days ago. And so... Everybody kind of trending well here. David VR also hit a ringing opposite field homer in that game against Team USA. So we're not uh, reading too much into spring statistics, but guys, these four are kind of trending positively right now, and they're going to be a major key to 2023. Also, by the way, Wade is not just going to play every day. He's a platoon player based on historical splits. And so I think high probability that Wilmer Flores or J.D. Davis can kind of be solid in that platoon role with uh, Lamont Wade Jr. But the corner spots are going to be critical for the Giants, as are the up to middle spots. But really, those that's the number one question I have right now going into 2023. And the next question I have is about defense. Is the Giants defense improved enough to not sink their season this time around? Because defense is really what sent them into a tailspin at times in 2023. So we'll seek to answer that question in just a minute. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories? Then you've got to try a Built Bar. We just, you know, got through the holidays. And by this point, a lot of people have given up on those New Year's resolutions to eat healthier. And I'm able to stick with it all year long, thanks to Built Bar, because you do not have to sacrifice taste, which is always the biggest issue. It's like, yes, I want to eat healthier, but no, I don't want to eat that salad every night. And so when you're able to reach for a Built Bar and get candy bar flavor with only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein in a typical bar, it's a game changer. And now you don't have to wait around to get a box. You can go to Walmart, go to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a 4-bar box with cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or if you're close to Sam's Club, you can run in and grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. Mmm, you can thank me later. All right, as promised, we are going to seek to answer the second question here, which is, is the defense improved enough to not sink the Giants season? Because let's be honest, I mean, you may have had some concerns about the defense going into 2022, but I don't know that it was kind of widespread that uh, we were thinking that defense was going to be as bad as it was because it was by and large, like a lot of the same players from 2021 when obviously the Giants had a magical regular season in which they won 107 games and not a lot went wrong. Well, defensively, it was a lot of the same guys. I mean, players like Darren Ruff were good defensively for the Giants in 2021. Surprisingly, given, you know, his body type, he was just not someone you would think of as like a plus defensive outfielder, but he he kind of was able to be that. And I don't know, it just didn't happen for the team in 2022 in so many different ways and a lot of it you know jock peterson rated really poorly as a defender you had you know the giants at minus 33 outs above average believe it or not there were two teams below them the nationals and the phillies were below them and so can they be better i think that they can because addition by subtraction mostly it's not like they brought in a lot of like this is the thing is it's I, I feel like we kind of think of improving the defense as you it has to mean that you've brought in like stud defensive players. But 
just improving from being horrible to being mediocre is a big improvement. And I think they have the potential to be better than mediocre, but mediocre as maybe the, like, if I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself, then I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to be mediocre. Obviously, if injuries happen, that can change things. And, like, that's why those corner guys, Conforto and Hanniger, are so important because if, let's say, they both go down with injuries, then what happens to that outfield? Suddenly you're looking at putting Peterson maybe back out there, and you're looking at putting Lamont Wade Jr. back out there. And then what does that do defensively at first base? And so there's like a cascading effect. And, you know, but that's kind of true of every team, your layers of depth. If you start to lose guys, what does that ultimately end up looking like? And so I think that to me, they probably can be better uh, defensively and better to the point of being solid. And it is addition by subtraction, like I said, because Jock Peterson was worth minus 11 outs above average last year, and you're taking him out of left field, according to you know the initial depth chart that moves him to DH. And also, they're trying him out at first base as kind of a backup. And so pretty clear they're looking to kind of take him out of that primary outfield mix. He also came into camp in better shape, which I think played a role in his kind of being a net negative defensively. And then Luis Gonzalez was worth minus five outs above average. This is a stat cast metric, by the way. Uh, he's one of those guys where I feel like he should be better than he was. He's not slow. He's got a good arm, but he kind of made some boneheaded type uh, mistakes in 2022. Brandon Belt was not moving well and put up minus four outs above average last season. And so we think of Belt as a good defender, but he really wasn't uh, in 2022 because of his knee that was so problematic and limited him a lot. And Darren Ruff, minus five outs above average. Tommy LaStella, minus four outs above average. Donovan Walton, minus four outs above average. So there's a trend here, which is that a lot of the players who were the worst defenders on the Giants are either no longer on the team or they don't factor into the primary depth chart, or they're moving positions like Jock Peterson to DH, where you're not kind of affecting the team on defense. And so I think that it is like a cumulative effect where it is addition by subtraction. And then I've pointed this out a bunch, but Michael Conforto and Mitch Hanniger essentially have track records of being above average defenders in the corners. And we also have explored that Mike Yastrzemski has actually been above average defensively, even in center field. Austin Slater is kind of a question mark for me because he was kind of grading out as mediocre in center, but last year quite negative and it kind of matched the eye test for me. And it was a lot of, you know, bad throws and stuff is how it showed up for Austin Slater, but when all is said and done, if you're taking out all these guys who put up these extremely negative type numbers, and we could look at more numbers, we could look at defensive runs saved, we could just talk about from a scouting perspective, we could look at ultimate zone rating, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just looking at one number here and taking out Peterson's minus 11, Gonzalez's minus 5, Ruff's minus 5, Belt's minus 4, Lastella's minus 4, Walton's minus 4. Your mean Mercedes minus three, Jason Vossler minus three, Kevin Pablo minus two. There's just so many guys. And you look at Brandon Crawford plus seven, Mike Yastrzemski plus two, Slater plus two. It was actually defensive run save that didn't like Austin Slater, not outs above average. Tyro Estrada, same deal. Defensive run save didn't like Tyro Estrada, but outs above average plus two. Uh, Evan Longoria was zero, and obviously he's gone. And who's replacing him? Well, David VR was at minus one. And so that's a question for VR as well when we talked about the corners is can VR be solid enough defensively to kind of hold down that spot? And so I believe everything I just said uh, kind of demonstrates that they should be a lot better than they were in 2023. It's not that hard to improve when you're so bad at something because you just take out some of the worst guys. And even if you bring in some guys who are just decent, it just really raises the level. And so a lot of it was just kind of fluky, I feel like, last year with just certain players, I don't know, just not performing as well as hoped, like I said, with a lot of the same guys like Darren Ruff and Brandon Belt, just kind of taking negative turns there. So I think they should be good enough that it's not going to sink their season defensively. But 
but I didn't really see it coming last year. So only time will tell. And I, I do think though, if you, if you lose some guys, like I said, with Hanniger and Conforto, and then you suddenly have to put, whether it's Gonzalez or Peterson or Wade or whatever out in the outfield. And then defensively at first base, like Lamont Wade Jr. is kind of unproven there, uh, even though he was solid, I thought, in 2021 uh, when he filled in for Belt, who missed some time that year as well. So it is a big question, but I think they should be okay. So the next question that we're going to try to answer is, is this going to be the season in which finally they have some legitimate young talent kind of break through at the major league level? So we'll get to that question in just a minute. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. I'm always looking at the latest Warriors odds for their upcoming games. And I'm also looking at the WBC, which for me, I mean, it's really interesting. The United States, Dominican Republic, you know, being the favorites. United States, it's a tough call because their their offense is so good, but maybe the starting pitching isn't quite there. And so you can check out all NBA games, over-unders, point spreads, all that each and every day on FanDuel. And don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, here we go. We're going to seek to answer this next question for the Giants in 2023. Is this going to be the year that finally they get some impact talent to break through young talent at the major league level and it's not that they haven't had guys I mean you look at there was Logan Webb that's a huge developmental success story not a lot of people thought he was going to be anywhere near as good as he's turned out to be Camilo Duvall has been a huge developmental success story so maybe I could frame this question like are they going to have position players finally break through and be that impact talent but that's not really it either because I'm also asking specifically about Kyle Harrison here like is this going to be the year that the the pipeline kind of starts to look like it's really going to consistently churn out good players because you know Webb and Doval like not a lot of people in the industry saw them coming into being what they became I think of Tyro Estrada was also kind of a moderate success I say moderate only because He looks like a solid young player, but he doesn't necessarily look like a star young player, although I I do think he continues to to have some ceiling and have untapped potential maybe with power. And But like really, I'm thinking about Kyle Harrison. I'm thinking about Casey Schmidt. I'm thinking about Von Brown. I'm thinking about those are the guys. I mean, can can Kyle Harrison or Casey Schmidt or both uh, or David VR, guys who are currently on the roster too in David VR, and Joey Bart, like they're going to need, I would say, at least one of those guys to establish himself as a good major league player. And can they finally get like a star position player? Can VR like really take a leap forward and, and establish himself as not just a decent major league player, but more than that? Can Joey Bart uh, finally get off, you know, the get out uh, from underneath the struggles he's had so far in his major league career? I'm skeptical about that. If you listen to this show a lot, you know, we'll see. He's obviously got the pedigree. He's got huge raw power. But, you know, a new defensive metric on StatCast came out just the other day about blocking. And another thing that Joey Bart didn't really rate well in was blocking there. One of the worst in the league is what, how this metric graded him out as a blocker. Uh, but VR, Bart, Schmidt, K- Kyle Harrison, Ken one of them or two or more kind of break through and can the Giants farm system progress from having a somewhat down year? I mean, Marco Luciano, can he progress? So huge year for the young Giants. And and if they kind of generally trend negatively, it's going to be a problem. They kind of need this one to trend positively. So I'll be looking out for that. A lot of these guys have a chance to impact the major league team. And so that 
not only will say a lot about the future, but also about the current upcoming year. And the last question I want to ask here, the last burning question is, can the Giants pitching depth make up for the lost upside? I thought it was interesting on fan graphs. They kind of ran a piece about the highlighting the teams that uh, improved the most and the least in the starting rotation. And the Giants were one spot above the Houston Astros in terms of the kind of projections for their starting rotation being the worst from last year to this year not projections but last year's actual performance versus this year's projections it's kind of funny they're looking at like war which is looking at FIP and the Giants FIP was much better than their actual ERA so this year's projection is like kind of similar to what their actual results were last year but the peripheral numbers were better than that last year so I don't really care for looking at it that way. But the the point is, you lose a guy like Carlos Rodon, who has that Cy Young caliber upside and dominance in him. He is on the injured list. He's going to start the season on the injured list. So that, you know, obviously health is a big part of it. Even if you have a Rodon, if, if he can't pitch, then you're not getting that production. But, you know, two years in a row, you lose these guys who are like front of the rotation type performers in Gosman and Rodon. And this year, it's just kind of built a little bit differently in that it's they have so many like quality major league starters, but they don't have that same guy who looks like the dominant player that Carlos Rodon was. That being said, did we see like Kevin Gosman turning into what he became? No, I don't think. I mean, he initially signed on a one year, nine million dollar deal. And so, you know, it's hard to it's hard for me to say certain guys just can't reach that potential because they kind of got the most out of a Kevin Gosman. But will their pitching depth kind of be enough to have them be a good pitching staff, especially in the rotation? I think in the bullpen, you you do have some real upside arms in, with the likes of Doval and Taylor Rogers, And then there's a lot of quality depth behind them. But in the starting rotation, is that deep staff going to be enough to make up for the loss of the high upside of a Carlos Rodon last year. And then of course, Kevin Gosman the year before that. So those are the questions for me going into 2023. And that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked on Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider hitting that subscribe button, also rating it, leaving a review, whatever you can do. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Team USA and the WBC getting underway. Also, a lot of fun teams, not just USA, Dominican, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, etc. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be back with Monday with the latest from the W. We'll be back on Monday with the latest from the WBC and anything that goes down with the Giants. So thanks again for listening. Have a great weekend. You are now Locked on Giants.